Okay, so today we're going to talk about fixing the instability problem we saw that arose from the gate to drain capacitance in a MOS device. And it should also be noted that if we were looking at bipolar devices, the C mu is the equivalent of the C gate to drain. So this isn't device specific. So remember, our CGD primarily arises from metal overlap capacitance. So the basic cross section of a MOS device looks like what I've just drawn here. And we know that due to pinch off, there isn't too much capacitance between the gate and the drain contact, but the metal to metal capacitance can be fairly significant. Of course, in our schematic model, that would show up as a gate to drain capacitance between the gate and the drain. So with a single-ended device, there's not much we can do to reduce this effect other than maybe trying to resonate it. Alternatively, if we can use more than one device, we might be able to cascode. And cascoding, much like it helped us to improve the output power and efficiency of our amplifier, it also can help to improve the stability. And the reason is, Let's say that we have a feed forward signal that goes through the capacitance and then heads towards the output of the device. It has a few paths it can take. That feed forward signal can go through the device, through the, uh, through the uh, capacitance, through the uh, upper MOSFET and the cascode to the output. Some of it can go through the CDS capacitance if there's any drain to source overlap capacitance. And some of it is even going to be attenuated by going through the drain capacitance uh, of the first uh, device. So what we're really showing here is that the cascode device increases the signal attenuation through the non-desired paths in the forward direction from input to output. But also, as the signal hits the output and maybe some of it is reflected backwards, it's going to increase the attenuation in the backwards path as well. I'm going to show that in blue. By providing alternate paths for the signal to take as it reflects back from the output towards the input, we attenuate the feedback signal that would make it all the way back to the input. And this helps with stability. We do have a couple of other options that we can use for stability. The next option is we could DQ the load network. And we're going to do that by adding a resistor. So here we've added a resistor in parallel with the load inductor. And this reduces the quality factor of the load inductor uh, and of the network in general. But it also reduces the gain of the amplifier. So there are limits to how small we can make this resistor. We can also DQ with a bypass RC network. This adds some frequency selectivity to the, to the DQing network. And we can set limits on the size of the capacitor that we use. For instance, we can set a limit that says that the C is greater than 1 over 2 pi R times F0, where F0 is the frequency of potential instability. And we can also say that C is less than 1 over 2 pi R times F max, where F max is the F max for the device, which is the maximum uh, uh, power gain frequency of the device. Okay, so with this, we're going to make a little bit of a divergent here and talk about the uh, about a few different transistor speeds. And then in the next lecture, we're going to return to stability and talk about stability more from the microwave uh, perspective, uh, which is using S parameters. So just our notes on transistor speeds. And we may have briefly talked about these before, but the uh, FT is a number that you sometimes hear, and that is the frequency above which the device has no current gain. And this is an important uh, frequency for most devices, and it isn't dependent upon the geometry of the device. Uh, FT for a, a MOS device is equal to GM divided by S times CGD plus CGS. If we're looking at a bipolar device, it's equal to GM divided by S times 
c pi plus c mu. Okay, we noted that this isn't geometry dependent, and the reason is that the way that we increase gm uh, is to increase the width of the device, uh, uh, for instance. And if we increase the width of the device, the capacitances are going to increase proportionally to gm. And so to a first order, as I increase the width of the device, ft doesn't change. Now, ft is the frequency above which the transistor has no power gain. Uh, Fp uh, for our device is more or less equal to 1 over 4 pi times Rgs times Cgs. And this is layout dependent. There is no ratio that cancels here. And we should note that for a bipolar device, Rgs would be the equivalent of R pi and Cgs would be the equivalent of C pi. Okay, so we'll stop there for now, and in the next lecture, we will look at stability from an S-parameter perspective, which is what we have to do when we have devices where we can't find the intrinsic device characteristics. Uh, in other words, somebody just gives us a set of S-parameter data uh, for the device. And this is more common when we're looking at devices like 3.5 devices uh, or uh, commercial off-the-shelf parts.